Hello everybody. Today we're going to be taking a look inside a 48 volt lithium iron phosphate e-bike battery. Uh, this is the kind of battery you might buy on eBay or from Ping uh, to power your e-bike or a little scooter, a little electric anything. This one's 10 amper hours or that's what it says here on the outside of the shrink wrap. It's about two years old and I just replaced the BMS, the battery management system on it. Uh, so I figured it's a good opportunity to, to pop it open and, and have a video uh, show you guys how to troubleshoot your e-bike bike battery if you're having problems with it and if you're not having problems with yours and you just wonder what it looks like under there you can watch the video and kind of see. So let's get started. This duct tape was added by me when I uh, pulled this off to troubleshoot the old BMS. Um, it had been missoldered. One of the surface mount components had been bridged to the wrong spot. So one of the components was getting way too much voltage and popped. Um, so, we have replaced it with this one, which I also bought on eBay, uh, used, as you can probably tell, it's got some corrosion, came from the Pacific Northwest. Um, this is what you'll see if you open up one of these batteries. To give you a brief description of what everything is, uh, these two wires are the positive cables. The thin one is for the charging and the thick one is for the discharging, uh, for running the motor and all of that kind of stuff. They go to the positive terminal of the 16th uh, cell. This uh, wire here that I've got covered with captan tape that goes to B minus goes to the negative of the number one cell. Uh, so these two represent 0 and 48 volts. Uh, it's actually slightly more than 48 volts and we'll go into that in a minute. Um, now this terminal here that's hooked to all of these MOSFETs is the power out. Uh, that actually runs the motor of the bike and that's the negative of it. Uh, the positive comes to the other side and does not go through the battery management system. And then this wire here is the charging wire, the negative charging wire. So uh, it pa pairs up with this small red wire here for charging the, the battery. Um, this connector here is the balance connector. And every single one of these wires is hooked to one of the positive terminals of the battery uh, all the way, cells 1 all the way through 16. Now that we know where the wires go, we can zoom in a little bit and look at the BMS board itself. BMS stands for Battery Management System or Battery Murdering System, depending upon who you ask. And, uh, this board's job is to ensure that none of the individual cells in the battery um, get charged to where their voltage is too high or discharged to where their voltage is too low. It also attempts to disconnect the battery if there's too much of a load on it, a short circuit, or uh, if there's a charging fault. Uh, in addition, it attempts to balance the cells while charging, and that is to ensure that each cell charges to the same uh, voltage. Now, the individual components on this are going to vary by the type of VMS you have, but they all seem to be fairly similar. In general, there's going to be one charge controller circuit for each seria, um, serial cell in the battery. So for this 16S battery, we've got 16 uh, charging circuits there, 16 separate charge controllers, and they're all connected together by opto-isolators. There's a row of opto-isolators on the top for discharge, and the ones on the bottom uh, control charging. So if any fault is detected in any one of those 16 circuits, it'll uh, disconnect these MOSFETs over here, uh, which actually are hooked to the charging and discharging mains of the negatives. And as far as these MOSFETs over here go, uh, these are the main disconnects for any fault that is detected. So the bottom one is for charging, and if there's any problem with the charging circuit, if there's too much voltage anywhere, uh, this MOSFET gets disconnected. Uh, the rest of them up here are for discharging, and it varies how many are installed in these. Uh, I've seen anywhere from two all the way up to all four. Um, so that's the kind of thing you're going to see there. But the circuits are very similar and the troubleshooting procedure is the same regardless of whether this is a version 1 or a version 2 or uh, what's going on with it. So, Anyway, uh, next thing we're going to look at, uh, these vertical wires here are basically one big load sensing resistor and its only job is to provide a, a little bit of resistance between there and there. Um, if the voltage between those two spots gets too high, it'll disconnect the discharge circuit. 
Continuing on the back of the board, uh, you can look and see here that there's components of each of the 16 charging circuits that run all the way down here. Uh, you can see where there's bunched up and bunched up where it doesn't seem like even rows. These are the power feeds for this IC right here. Uh, that's a NAND uh, gate. Uh, what it basically does is combine some of the um, faults together before it feeds it to the MOSFET uh, so that different fault conditions can, can trip this up. So this is this NAND gate is kind of uh, what ties some of all of this together into one solid BMS instead of just 16 separate circuits and, uh, and sometimes that chip blows out. The last component I'm going to talk about is the LEDs. Not all of these have LEDs. It's this middle row um, above all the opto-isolators, but below all these resistors and stuff. Um, and there's 16 LEDs there. The LED will only light up if the battery has done is done being charged and has reached slightly over the maximum charge voltage. So when the, when the red comes on, some people think, that it's charging. Um, no, it's done charging and it's actually overcharged. And it can be done charging and not light up red. The red specifically indicates overcharging. So if you don't have all of those light up before your charger kicks off, don't worry about it. It just means none of your those cells aren't being overcharged. There's nothing bad happening from that light not coming on. And if you don't have LEDs, don't worry about that too much either. The original BMS that I got with this didn't have LEDs. Okay, so uh, now that we have an understanding of what the circuit does and uh, how it works, we should be able to troubleshoot a little bit. The procedure is fairly simple and fairly similar for almost any of these battery management systems or battery systems that you're going to look at. Um, even if you switch to uh, like a LiPo battery uh, instead of lithium iron phosphate, the only thing that's really going to change is the voltages that you're looking at per cell and the number of cells that you've got to use to get to 48 volts, 36 volts, 72 volts, whatever your nominal voltage is. Um, but this procedure is going to hold true for any of these e-bike BMSs and it should uh, help you discern what's going on with your battery. So, step one in figuring out if there's anything wrong with the battery is to test the voltages between the three negative wires that come off of the BMS. Uh, here, here, and here. Um, so, if we check between the charge cable and the discharge cable, we see zero volts DC. Uh, that's good. We check between the battery negative and the discharge cable, 0 volts DC, battery negative, charge, uh, 0 volts DC. So that lets us know that we've got continuity between all three of those negatives. That means that uh, everything is working, it's running, this isn't tripped or blocking voltage in any way. That's a good sign. If you see any voltage between any of those, uh, that's a bad sign and tends to indicate a problem. If you see a voltage between the charge and the battery or charge and the, this, that means you've got a problem with your charging circuit. If you see voltage between those two points, uh, there's something going on with your discharge circuit and something is wrong and further troubleshooting is going to be required. And once we've checked all of the negative uh, terminals to make sure that there's continuity and that there's no significant voltage difference between any of them, the next step is to check the uh, positive and negative discharge and charge cables. So, if we check our little uh, charging cable here, let's shove one of the terminals into each, and we can see that we've got 53 and a half volts uh, on the charging terminal. If we do the same for the discharging, we'll see that we should have something very similar. Now, so you're going to want to verify uh, that not only are those voltages the same, but that they are full battery voltage. If you have a 48 volt battery and it's only delivering 42 volts on the discharge uh, terminals, then there is something wrong. Okay, once you've checked the positive and negative charge and discharge terminals uh, to make sure that the full battery voltage is available both for charging and for discharging. The next step is to check the balance connector here as well as this terminal there to ensure that uh, each single cell is at a nominal voltage 
the lithium iron phosphate, the minimum voltage that they can get to before they receive damage is around 2 volts, and the maximum voltage is around 3.65, although 3.5 is a good practical max. You don't get much charge past that. So anything outside that range indicates battery damage. That means the cells are gone themselves. The problem may not be in your BMS. It might actually be the battery cells. And if that happens, you end up having to pull apart the batteries underneath there. This particular battery uh, has seven parallel cells and 16 in series, so what you end up with is 112 18650 cells in there. Uh, the cells are valence cells, they're 1400 milliamp hours each. They're very, very nice cells. I was very happy when I opened this up and saw them, uh, and the nominal capacity, if you add it all together, is 9800 milliamp hours. Uh, which is surprisingly close to the 10 amper hours that it has on that shrink wrap there. Uh, so it was really nice to see that they hadn't really overstated the battery capacity for an eBay seller. Uh, I was happy. Anyway, and the first thing you're going to want to do is uh, touch the B negative and then the first wire there. And you should see somewhere around 3.2, 3.3, 3, .3, you know, three and a third volts right around usually. And that's what we've got. And if we go to the next one, we should see the same thing. And what we really want to do is do that all the way across and ensure that those are pretty close in voltage to each other. If any of those is below 2 volts or is above 3.5, 3.6 volts, um, then in any case you may have a problem with the cells themselves in there. And it's generally not a good sign because that's a lot of work once you start tearing that apart. Um, but it's still fixable, it just sucks. So if any of these uh, voltages on your balance connector are way too low or way too high, uh, the next step is probably going to be to disconnect the balance connector from the BMS and test it at the balance connector, as in test the cells directly without the BMS hooked up and see if the voltage is any different. If when you disconnect the BMS, the voltage pops back up, the problem is more than likely in your BMS. Uh, if, on the other hand, all of these cells are um, in nominal, they're over 2 volts and under 3.5, uh, mine all ride at around 3 and a third, uh, but you're still seeing a fault condition somewhere on the BMS, then the problem is going to be the BMS itself. Uh, so if you see 3 volts all the way across here, 3 and a third volts on a fully charged battery, but you're still seeing 5 volts here, or 3 volts or 8 volts there when you're trying to charge, uh, then it's pretty easy to see that um, there's something faulting on this BMS when there ought not to be. Uh, and in all likelihood, replacing it is going to fix your problem. If, on the other hand, you're seeing 3 and a third volts all the way across on each of those cells, um, but there's no fault condition here, but it's still tripping on you when you try and use it, there's one last thing you can do to see what's going on, and that is to bypass the discharge protection altogether. In order to do that, you would desolder this main uh, discharge wire here, and you would solder it back on over here at the negative battery terminal. Uh, I would not recommend doing this for general use. That's only to troubleshoot and see if your BMS has gone bad. Once you do that, if you hook this battery back up to the e-bike and it works, it works fine, it's not faulting anymore, uh, then your discharge is going out on your BMS and you're going to have to check some stuff out. You're also going to want to be very careful when you do that to check all of these and make sure that None of the individual cells go below voltage while you're running without discharge protection. It is possible to permanently damage your battery if you ride around with it bypassed. Now the last thing we'll talk about is the procedure for replacing this BMS. It's really simple to replace. There's only a few steps, um, but it should be done in a particular order. The first thing you should do is disconnect this balance connector. The reason for that is that these three wires here that you have to mess with when they're soldered on and in addition they're all negative and they're all supposed to be in continuity with each other so uh, the only positive voltage coming into this board comes through this balance connector and its balance connector has the positive voltage from every single cell in the battery so in order to ensure that there's no voltage going through here when we're soldering on it and messing with it pop that off the next step is going to be to desolder this wire this wire and this wire and solder them onto the correct places on the new board 
and the next step would be to reconnect that balance connector. Um, when you're doing this, you're going to want to use ESD protection, electrostatic discharge protection, as there are a lot of MOSFETs on this board, and they're pretty easy to pop with static electricity, so you don't want to risk that. Um, it is possible to do further troubleshooting. You can check the voltages at the top pins of any of these opto-isolators uh, for any significant voltage. Anything over a volt on them indicates a fault on the bottom. It would be a fault in the charging on the top row. Here it would be a fault in the discharging. It's not necessary. Once you know the BMS is bad, you don't necessarily have to care which channel is bad, you just replace the whole board. Um, but I am going to include a link to the schematic for anyone who's interested. Uh, sometimes it is useful to be able to pull one of the opto-isolators or MOSFETs off just to bypass a broken charge controller temporarily. Uh, that's what I did with my old BMS when I ordered the new one to replace it so that I could still ride the bike around for the week or two that it took me to get it. Um, anyway, hope this helps somebody out there. and Have a great day.